Apple just released iOS 17.5 and it contains more than 15 new features and changes for your iPhone. So in this video, we're going to cover all of those changes along with an update on the performance, battery life, and if you should update or not. So first off, the podcast widget on the home screen now changes color based on the dominant color of the cover art. So before on previous versions of iOS, you can see that it just remained at that purple color even when it was playing. But now in iOS 17.5, that color changes based on the cover art. We also have a few changes in the Apple News application. So if you were to put your device into airplane mode, you can see 17.4 on the left, 17.5 on the right. We now have an offline mode in iOS 17.5 so that when you have no internet connection, it now says set up offline mode. And if you tap on the red text there, it shows that news downloads content for offline mode at night when your phone is charging and with Wi-Fi on. And of course, background app refresh needs to be on as well. And if you go into settings, we have a brand new section here for news plus offline mode where you have automatic downloads and also download options where you can select what you want to automatically download and also a section for optimized storage and you can see that before we did have automatic downloads but it was just to download issues of magazines but this is for you know offline mode for both magazine issues and also the today view so you can see i'm still in the airplane mode for both and if i want to tap to try to view an article on 17.4 it just says story unavailable whereas in 17.5 i'm able to go in there and view that article in the today view while in airplane mode without any connection also in the news app if we go to the following tab in the bottom right hand corner and then go to puzzles there is a new puzzle here in ios 17.5 also as you can see from that pop-up we now have game center integration so we'll talk about that in a moment but you could see in addition to crossword and crossword mini we now have a new word game called quartiles so this is just a puzzle word game where you just combine these different quartiles to make actual words so for example th ra and sh makes thrash that's a word so we could tap on the check mark and then it shows that we found that word and we have our score up top along with our next rank and how many quartiles. So TRU and TH makes truth, there we go. And if you tap on the three dots up in the top right hand corner, you get these different options right here, along with the option to reveal all words. If I do that, it's going to reveal all the words. And you can also go back in the archive and play previous puzzles as well from previous days. They don't expire, you can always go back and play them. Now also, like I mentioned, we do have game center integration and rankings. So if you go up top to this new option up in the top left hand corner and tap on that star with the two underlines you can see that we have quartiles at first so it shows friends and we also have a global leaderboard for quartiles but if you go back you can see we have also leaderboards for crossword and crossword mini and then if you go back again it shows you game center here all of the activity from your friends and if you wanted to turn off game center for news plus puzzles if you did not want to see your results on the leaderboards you can turn that off with this toggle and you'll also notice some condensed settings here as well so before we had automatic downloads for download issues and download audio but both of those have been added under the news plus offline mode under download options so in here you can see magazine issues and also audio stories ios 17.5 also includes a major change for those in the EU and that's because EU users can now download applications directly from websites so you can now download an application and install it from a third-party website such as alt store so here is what that process looks like so you get the pop-up to allow applications from alt store in this example and you hit on allow and then after that it will show in settings under app installation you can see that you've allowed for web installation alt store in this example you could remove it from there if you would like to and there's also a new section in settings now for app installation it shows up under app store and here is the screen when you want to install the third-party app marketplace of alt store you can install it right there and that's what it looks like where you can download the delta emulator and other applications that are within that third-party app store ios 17.5 also adds cross-platform tracking detection so this allows you to receive unknown tracking alerts when third-party trackers are following you and not just air tags 
anymore. So Google recently launched their own Find My Device network, and they partnered with Apple to allow third-party trackers such as Chipolo and Pebblebee to send the Found Moving With You alerts across both Android and iOS devices. So basically now if somebody is trying to stock you with a tracker from Tile, Chipolo, Samsung, Eufy, or Pebblebee, you're going to get a notification even if the device was paired with an Android beforehand. This next change is a big one because with iOS 17.5, there's a new repair state feature that allows you to keep Find My enabled when sending an iPhone to Apple for repair. So if you go into the Find My application and you find one of your devices and you swipe Swipe over to remove it. When you go to remove it, it's going to say this cannot remove iPhone. Prepare this device for repair. And it says this iPhone is linked to your Apple ID and cannot be removed while it's online, but you can still prepare it for repair. And this is great because a feature like this was possible before from iCloud.com, like on the web, but the device would be removed from your account. But now with this change in 17.5, the device is never removed from your account and Find My remains active. So this is going to make repair technicians live a lot easier because not only are you as a user not going to have to worry about disabling Find My before sending your phone in, but also these repair techs are going to be able to bypass that one hour delay that is set by stolen device protection. So now you're going to have to do less when you send your phone in. And now these repair techs are not going to have to constantly receive phones and send them back for the user to, you know, fix the problems that they didn't do in the first place, such as removing Find My and turning off stolen device protection. So this is a win-win for both parties. And for those wondering if this is going to be a security, you know, flaw, a security issue because technology technicians can bypass the one hour delay set by stolen device protection. No, Find My is still going to be active, like I mentioned, which means the activation lock is still going to be active on your phone. So that's not something that thieves are going to be able to take advantage of because thieves can't do anything when activation lock is set on your phone. This update also includes new wallpaper. So if you go to your lock screen here and you tap and hold and tap on the plus in the bottom right hand corner and scroll down, you will see that under the pride section, we have new wallpapers here that have some really awesome animations. Maybe my favorite animation of any Apple wallpaper in the past. So we'll just select this one right here and we'll just go ahead and tap on add and set this as a wallpaper pair, which by the way, there were other styles as well. So if you go into one of these, you could see the different styles that we have here, different colors and just different vibes. It's a very neon type style for these wallpapers, which is pretty cool. And if you go into this and you swipe up, take a look at that animation. Not only is it a cool transition from lock screen to home screen, but also the orientation, pun intended, changes every time you go to your home screen from your lock screen. That is pretty awesome. I think it'd be really cool if Apple added this, you know, in the future where you can maybe customize some text and it shows with the same animation. We have a couple of changes in the books application. So if you go into books, you can see that the reading goal up in the top right hand corner has been redesigned. So before underneath of home, we had today's reading and it would show five minutes left. But now in iOS 17.5, that has been condensed and made a lot more modern and minimal. It just says zero with the little reading, you know, meter around it with five underneath. And that represents the amount of minutes remaining. And when you tap on that, it will take you down to the bottom, just like it did in iOS 17.4. But we can see a couple of changes here as well. And that change is right here for books read this year. So it says one, two, and three, three more books to reach your goal. And then there's also a couple of other minor changes in here. So you can see that the previous section before you had to go to see all over over here to be able to see all of the previous books but now we just have an arrow next to previous and that allows us to go in to see all and the same goes for every other one of these sections as well so computers and internet current bestsellers pretty much everything here has an arrow next to the title whereas before in ios 17.4 you can see that we just had the little see all button beneath it which just kind of expanded this section and was kind of unnecessary so now it's been cleaned up quite a bit 
with 17.5. There's also been a very minor change to the weather widget. So this specific weather widget here, you can see that the current temperature font size has been reduced. Also the font size of the city has been reduced as well. And it looks like the font over here for precipitation, wind, all that looks to be more bold than it was in 17.4. And if you switch to the traditional current weather temperature widget, you can see that the font size has been shrunk there as well. So the current temperature font size is smaller as is the description underneath of it and also the city up top seems to be more bold as well if we head into our settings and go to the privacy and security section and then scroll down to pass keys access for web browsers there's a new glyph icon to the left of it to match up with everything above whereas in 17.4 it was just missing and it looked kind of awkward down there so now it looks a little bit less awkward also in this update when you type in jerusalem it no longer suggests an emoji so this is in response to Basically in iOS 17.4, if you typed in Jerusalem, it would show a Palestinian flag here in the autocomplete section. It would suggest the Palestinian flag. So this has been resolved and now that no longer shows up when you type in Jerusalem. And then taking a look at the release notes, we have a couple of changes here. So first off, we have new core motion feature. So this is specifically for developers. And then below that, we also have a new feature for eSIM. So new Apple universal link for eSIM install. So that should lead to easier eSIM installation. And then a couple of other bug fixes that have not been documented by Apple, but I've noticed have changed. And from reading your guys' comments as well, I know have been fixed or at least resolved for the most part. And the first one has to do with Apple Music downloading over cellular. So that appears to be fixed with iOS 17.5. Before on iOS 17.4 and 17.4.1, there was a big issue where users could not download music over cellular but i can confirm for me that that has been fixed and it's working as intended and there's also been a fix for the bug related to mail banner notifications so sometimes in ios 17.4 and 17.4.1 when you would receive an email a badge would still appear on the app icon if you read it but that appears to be fixed here with 17.5 as well so when it comes to performance i would actually expect a minor bump in performance with ios 17.5 compared to ios 17.4 so I myself have noticed a minor bump in performance I'm not really seeing any type of lag or stutter whatsoever on the home screen lock screen when it comes to app switching any of that here with 17.5 everything has been great for me I did also run a Geekbench 6 CPU test and we scored a 2973 on the single core and a 7348 on the multi-core a very high score as you can see here compared to all of my previous results it beat everything in the past, including 17.4 and 17.4.1 on both single core and multi-core. So that is also a good sign. Now, when it comes to the battery life, battery life is a lot harder to judge, but you can see that I'm at 93% battery remaining. You can tell me what I started this video with, but battery life also seems to be improved here with iOS 17.5 over iOS 17.4 and 17.4.1, where I didn't have the greatest experience with battery life. So you guys will have to let me know how battery life is for you, but for me and for most others that I've talked to, battery life is improved over 17.4 and 17.4.1. So that is great news. So with all that being said, should you update to iOS 17.5? And I would say that there's really no reason not to. I would say that if you're in the EU, you have the biggest advantage. You have the biggest you know, reason to upgrade because of being able to install applications from third-party websites. But even if you're not in the EU, there are some changes to books. You know, you have the new wallpapers. You have the big new change to sending your Apple device in for repair, how Find My stays enabled and all that. So, you know, not anything super flashy with this update, but it's good in terms of features and also performance and battery life. So for those reasons, I think for most people, you should go ahead and update. And then finally, I do want to touch on what to expect next from Apple. So of course, all eyes are going to be on iOS 18, which is coming on day one of Apple's WWDC 2024, which is on Monday, June 10th. That is when we will see the first developer beta for iOS 18 beta one. Now, in the meantime, we still have, you know, a few weeks to go before that, 
but we should also be seeing iOS 17.6 beta one roll out soon to beta testers. And we could also see another public release before the release of iOS 18 beta one. It will likely be a 17.5.1 if we do get an update in between, you know, 17.5 and iOS 18 beta one. I would not expect iOS 17.6 to be released until after iOS 18 beta one gets released. So it's probably going to be, you know, potentially in late June, if not early July. So that is iOS 17.5. If you want to continue seeing what's new in future iOS versions, hit that subscribe button down below. That's what we specialize in here on the channel. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.